up everybody, it's Dave from Let's Make a Game Together, thanks for checking out this channel. First of all, thanks to my Patreon supporters, if you want to support the channel, links are in the description. So let's just jump straight into it today. Um, basically, let's, let's check out where we left off. Um, okay, here we go, press play, wait for my computer to think. And we've got this character here, we've got a time left up here in the um, top left hand corner, and a score, and when we hit the end of the level, which is an imaginary... Um, invisible block here, it adds, a, so it adds our time uh, and times it by I think 10 or 100 or something and yeah, it gives us a score. Cool, so this lesson I want to add some um, coins, um, it's for the score and I also want to um, add some, um, some uh, I want to adjust the enemy a little bit. So to do that I have gone into sprites and I've added um, a coin to our sprite um, here. So if I just click on Sprite Editor, it'll open up, um, and I can slice. I think automatically, and I think that works. If I apply that, cool. Got my coin there. Uh, if you're following along, li links in the description. If you're using these same assets as me. Um, Hopefully you're not. <laughs> They're horrible assets. You can find way better ones. Cool. So everything still works. Play is still the same size. Everything's good. But now we have this coin uh, sprite here. So I'm just going to first of all drag in the coin um, and going to make that. Uh, that's good. Just leave it that's that same size and going to add a collider. So Cloud of 2D and a, I'm going to make that is trigger. I'm going to add a rigid body 2D and just going to put as static. I'm not sure, actually, I'm not sure if we need the rigid body. So I'm going to just take that off. Someone commented in the description. Um, I'm not used to, I'm used to putting a rigid body in everything, but I'm not sure if we actually need it. So we'll just leave it off for now and just see if uh, that anything happens. Okay, cool, and um, now the coin is there. Um, let's just press play. Cool, cool, coin is there, we can run into it. Awesome. Um, and the other thing is we want to do is just we want to, eventually we'll get the coin to rotate, but for now it's just gonna stay like that. We're just gonna call this coin and then we can just drag that into our prefabs to make a prefab of that set coin. And delete it. Cool. All right, so we've got a coin there. Uh, it doesn't do anything yet because we haven't adjusted any of the scripts. So, but uh, what I want to do first is let's chuck a couple of boxes in here. Copy, paste. And just put it there. Just put it there, and you remember this old, this old trick. It's got the enemy there, and hopefully he moves back and forth. Cool. So what I want want to happen is I want that the player every time the player lands on top of the um, enemy, he bounces off, just like in uh, the original, and the enemy dies. And same as uh, if the enemy runs into the player, the player takes a uh, uh, damage to his health, or he dies. Um, so to start, I think we'll just do the coolest thing, which is to get him to bounce off uh, the enemy's head, which is actually quite easy to do. Um, so first thing is first, let's move the player from where he is there, over here. So this, pro this project is going to need a bit of a clean up in a, in a future episode, where we um, clean up the project. Um, <clears throat> so but for now we're just going to leave it a little bit messy and that's fine. Cool. Um, and just a little bit of neatening up if we go to the play score script. Uh, we see that if we run into any trigger, we will it'll count our score. We don't want that currently right now. Uh, if I drag in the coin, I'm not sure if you noticed before, when I press play, it'll count the score every time I touch the trigger, which is not what we want. So let's go into that. Let's fix it up quickly. So if we say if... Um, trig, which is this variable here, dot game objects dot collider, not game object dot tag, sorry, equals 
actually, let's just say gamers.name at this stage. You should never use uh, gamer.name in a final product. It's um, because if the names change for any reason, it's going to screw your code. But for now, let's just leave it that until we work out a good system for our um, for our tags and layers and things like that. Um, and we're just going to find out what it's called. What is it called? It is called end level. And copy that perfectly. Make sure it is perfect. So if it's called end level, it's going to count the score. So if I press play now, equals end level, equals equals end level. Then when I run into this coin, nothing happens. That's what we want. And if we jump over this and we touch the end, it counts the score. Cool. All right, so that just fixes that little um, problem. Um, and we can do the same thing. Um, so we can say like if um, trig dot game object dot name equals coin. Uh, and then we can just say something like um, play a score equals play a Actually, I think it's a play a score plus 10. Plus equals 10, sorry. So that means the coins would be worth 10. Of course, it's uh, called coin with a big C. Let's just change that. Let's just change it in code, actually. It's got to be absolutely perfect. This is why you don't want to use. Um, you know, game object name because say if you instantiate them, they'll be like called game object dot like coin dot clone or something. But until we work out what we want to do, that's what we're going to do. Um, so yeah, now every time I touch the coin, it's the score goes up by ten, which is great. Uh, and then we can also say um, trig. We can just say destroy trig dot game object fantastic let's have a look at that hey we got 10 points and it destroyed our coin yay we have a working score system for our coins I mean there's no animations or anything but hey it works that's pretty good easy peasy Japanese okay cool so that's done um, well at least temporarily done uh, and next thing we can move on to is the um, player um, and the enemy, jumping off the enemy. Okay, so right now um, I actually turned off the enemy move script. If anyone was wondering why my enemy wasn't moving, I was just um, doing some testing before I started this tutorial. So yeah, everything's working fine. Um, now it's time to start thinking about um, our layers and our tags a tiny little bit. Um, so if we look over on our enemy, um, we've got, you can see the um, layer is an ignore raycast. Now that's fine, but what's going to happen is when our player needs to shoot a raycast downwards, uh, it means that when he is shooting his ray down, it's, going, it's not going to register because the layer is in ignore raycast. It won't, it's not affected by any rays. So what we want to do is we actually want to adjust some of these settings inside of Unity uh, to fix uh, this problem. There are ways you can get around it with code, and we might do that in the future, but for now we're just going to take the shortcut. So with this, we're going to click um, on Enemy and click Default. I'm going to apply that to the prefab as well, and we're going to press Play and see what happens. Right now, the enemy freaks out because it's constantly, the ray inside the enemy is constantly touching something and it's switching which direction it moves. Um, so what we can do is we can actually go to file, uh, Edit, Project Settings, Physics 2D. And there is a little setting down here called Query Start in Colliders. Now if you don't have this, this is a, a setting that was introduced in Unity 4.6, so quite a while ago. But if you don't have this tick, then queries will start outside of the collider of the, of the game object. So if we untick that and press play, the 
game the enemy game object, even though it's in default layer, it works perfectly, which is exactly what we want. So for now, I, this is a nifty little trick I just 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 discovered, um, and we're just going to use that for now. So that works fine, and it means that our code will work fine when it's running with the player as well. So if we just uh, save that, our enemy was now on the default layer, and we can also make sure our prefab of the enemy is on the default layer. Fantastic, our player is on the default layer, cool. Okay, so we can then open up our scripts and we can open up our player move script. Um, eventually, um, like I keep saying, we are going to clean up, clean this project up a little bit, but for now this is fine, this is what we're going to do. So, uh, man. okay, so we're going to create, no, we're not going to worry about a variable actually at this stage, we're just going to keep it messy. We're going to create a new uh, method called void um, player raycast. And we're going to say, in update, we're just going to call that player raycast. And then we go down to our player raycast and we're going to add some code. So what we want it to do is we want when the play, we want to shoot a ray down uh, from the player and then every time it touches the enemy, uh, we want to do something. And, and in our case, it's going to be that that is going to bounce off the enemy's head, which is what happens in Mario. So if we go over to our enemy move script, we can take this line of code here, which is raycast hit, physics 2D raycast, transform to position, yada, yada, yada. Copy that and move it over to here, dump it in here. Now, we're going to delete just the end here up until, oh, just up, we'll just delete it up till, up till here. Actually, I probably didn't even need to copy it in that case. And where we're we going to raycast from, it's asking for a vector2.origin. We're going to say transform.position comma, and what direction, we're going to say vector two dot down. Cool, so now it's just going to be shooting a ray downwards, uh, and then we can just say if if hit dot distance is less than 0.9f, I suppose. That might work. And, so this, this number here will be different for your game because your character will be a different size, but fiddle around with this uh, the same uh, way as what I'm doing. I just guessed 0 0.9, it might not be 0 0.9, but it's a quite a large number, I'm sure it'll work fine. Uh, and hit.collider.tag equals um, yeah, we're just going to write ground at this stage. And then we're just going to say debug.log touched ground. So we can also use this for our grounded method, but we're not going to worry about that in this episode, probably not. And let's just see if it works. Yep, so touch ground and we're constantly touching ground. And if I jump on this, we're no longer touching ground. Touching ground, no longer touching ground. Awesome, so that's working fine. Uh, and it turns out that that I chose the right number. So 0 0.9 would work for me. Remember to change this for your character if you use a different size. That's just the, sorry, that's the, the, yeah, obviously the length from the center of the game object to wherever it's going. Um, and it's working because our um, ground is tagged with the ground tag. Now let's just go into tags. And tag the enemy with the ground tag, just for now. And our variable keeps going up, which is what we want. Um, but we want to add an enemy tag. So it looks like I've already done that when I was testing things out. 
we go into your tags, add a tag like that and type an enemy and then click back on the enemy and we're going to tag that enemy with the enemy tag and press apply. In fact, all the other tags seem to, no, we'll just believe it, we'll leave it, believe it. It's gonna say we should use it uppercase. And then we can just say enemy and then we're gonna say touched enemy or should I say squished. Oh my gosh, my typing. <sighs> okay, press play, let's see how this works. Fell off. Cool. So now I jump. If I jump on the character, yep, squished enemy. Cool. So instead of saying squished enemy, we don't need this line of code anymore. Um, we can write we can do the magic, which is just to get the player to, to bounce up, uh, and we'll just use, I suppose, an add force for that. So we can just say get component rigid body 2D add force and we're going to add force vector 2 dot up and we're going to times that by 1000. All right, let's see if this works. Yay! The player bounces off the enemy. I'm not jumping twice there. But you see if, we, if we're right on the edge, it doesn't work. Uh, that's something that we'll adjust in a later um, video because we're only shooting one ray out from the center of the character, so it has to be right in the center, but we can fix that. Cool, and there was a big jump there. That's obviously a bug as well. We can fix that. Um, and we can also write in here, um, uh, no, we're going to leave that for now. Okay, cool. So let's just uh, recap on what we've done. We've created a coin that puts our score up by um, 10 when we collect it. And when we jump on the character, now obviously we'll need to make it so when the character um, jumps on the enemy that it squashes and all that stuff. But we'll leave that for when we actually have a proper character in there. So the next thing we want to do is we want to make make it so when the enemy bumps into the player, it um, damages the player or at least kills him. Um, so we are going we are going to write a simple script. Um, so if we go into our uh, enemy move script, so we got this uh, line of code here. If hit dot distance equal is less than this, flip. So I suppose we can just test something out here. So we can just say um, destroy. And what do we want to destroy? Hit dot collider dot game object, and let's just see if that works. So it should delete the whatever it collides with. Yay! And then now it can escape. Cool. Okay, so instead of doing that, um, we'll just take this line of code here, and we can say um, flip. So instead of, I suppose we can just have another if statement here. It's saying if hit dot collider dot tag equals player, capital P, I'm pretty sure. Then we can say destroy hit dot collider dot game object. So obviously when we when we flesh out a game a little bit more, we will have a um, damage system. Maybe the character grows smaller or whatever, or maybe he just dies instantly. So I collected that. And the player doesn't die. Okay, what have I done here? Maybe my player doesn't have... Let's just check my player. Oh, it's on the ignore ray cast layer. Let's click default and click apply. Yeah, and obviously we get an error um, because now you know our, our camera is trying to reference the um, player variable, but it's no longer there. But that's fine. We can fix that in the future. Um, 
but yeah, cool. So that's 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 it. The uh, player now dies when he gets hit by the enemy. We can collect coins and we can jump on the enemy's head. Oh, damn it. <laughs> uh, one thing that is a bit annoying is the fact. Yay. Yay. One thing that's really annoying is I can't jump when I touch these things. So instead of um, what we're going to do is work on our um, uh, grounding system. So right now we have this here. This is on collision enter 2D, um, which is a collision. And if I we touch something that's called ground, then um, is ground equals true. So instead of doing this, we can just say um, we can copy this. And we can say, if it's less than nine, um, and and hit dot collider dot tag does does just does not equal enemy because we want to be able to jump off everything that's gone on enemy at this stage. It will we'll change it in the future. Um, and then we just need to copy this. His ground equals true. Cool. And then we can get rid of this. Get rid of that as well. We'll keep this on collision enter 2D here. Go back to our game. Press play. All right. So now we can jump. But we can't jump. Well, he'll bounce off the player of the uh, enemy, but we can't actually jump. Uh, the enemy. Cool. It says here object reference was not set to an instance of an object. Let's let's look at that. What was what's going on there? Ah, uh, when we jump over the gap, it seems that we don't have don't have anything underneath. Okay. Let's just see where it brings us. Double click on the debug. Okay, all right, so, oh, okay, so the problem is, is it's, um, it needs to be able to hit something, right, because it's asking here for uh, a distance and also the, for a collider. So we need to check, so a quick, just hacky way that we can do that is before all this we can say, uh, if hit does not equal null and if hit dot collider does not equal null and hit the distance yeah yeah that so we copy that stick in there this is a really ugly if statement should fix the problem Yay, it fixes the problem. And I think we'll leave this episode here. Uh, I'm heaps, heaps excited with where this project is going. We're getting to the stage where we can start to move from prototyping stage to, uh, to animations and some music and things like that, which is really, really good. Um, we're still a little bit off yet, but um, we're, we're basically getting the, the main mechanics down. We still need, still need a few more things, uh, but that's cool. We're getting closer. That is really exciting. Um, I'm going to leave this episode here, but thanks for checking it out. Um, special thanks to all my Patreon supporters who actually uh, helped me decide what I was going to talk about in this video. If you want a bit more influence over where we go with these videos or what we um, talk about, make sure you check out the Patreon links in the description. Um, then you can join the conversation over there. Thanks heaps, guys, and I'll see you next time. Peace.